Hello, and welcome to Charger Bulletin News. I'm Kaylee Feschler. The election for West Haven Mayor is approaching, with voters heading to the polls on Tuesday, November 7th, to cast their ballot. I sat down with current Mayor Ed O'Brien this week, who is currently running a write-in campaign for his re-election. So, to start off, um, can you tell me why you think you'd be the best leader for West Haven out of all the other candidates? Um, I think we've, we've, in the last four years, have done a lot of good for the city. We've done economic development like we've never seen in, in the city before. Our finances are getting better um, by, by everybody's standard, Wall Street, uh, the state, our city financial advisors. Um, quality of life, we've, we've done so much on that end. Um, so I just think, I think we need to continue doing what I've been doing. And, you know, we have, a, we have a good track record so far, and I think it's important to continue moving in that direction. In addition to the Mayor's Advisory Commission, what are your plans to include the university students more in the West Haven community? Um, every time we do have an economic development project, like we just did the Atwood up in that area, we include the students on what amenities they would like to see. Um, I would continue doing that in the future. Um, and again, I'm, I'm up at UNH campus all the time talking to students and, and including them in, in decisions that, that affect them in that area. The Republican candidate, Dave Riccio, sat down with Editor-in-Chief Glenn Rohrbacker to talk about his campaign for Mayor of West Haven. So to start off, can you tell me why you think you'd be the best leader for West Haven for the next two years? I think I'm the be, be best leader for many reasons. A, my public service involvement throughout my lifetime. 35 years involved in our children's programs. A, a lifetime of public service in that area. I'm the longest city councilman that I've touched four decades in the history of West Haven, whether it's Republican or Democrat. So government experience. Also, uh, I feel I'm more than qualified, but probably above all is that I care about this community and I care about the people here. For, for so long, the people of the city of West Haven have been the short end of the stick. It's been that inner circle politics that has been the cancer of this community. And I, I've taken this plight because I believe West Haven can do so much better in all facets, uh, well, from our children, to a middle age, to the elderly. So uh, there is no doubt in my mind that on November 7th, if I am elected, you're getting a, a person, a leader, and someone who truly cares about the people of City West Haven. A group of faculty and staff members from the university hosted a symposium based on the new art exhibit, What Makes America Great, hosted in the Seton Art Gallery. There was a group discussion on different current issues and how the gallery can help express solutions to those problems. Here's reporter Sandrea Devanish with more on the event. On Thursday, November 2nd, curator of What Makes America Great, Gisergi Manuel, along with three other colleagues, expressed personal anecdotes relating to their favorite piece in the exhibition, as well as society's interpretation of what shapes our views from art to journalism. I've gotten into many conversations about monuments, which is something that obviously is directly impacted by art. Art is often used as propaganda. I'm Sandra Devanish, reporting for the Charger Bulletin. We now go to Cameron Haley with your Charger Sports Update. Thanks, Kaylee. Women's Volleyball won on Tuesday in a Halloween matchup against Pace. The Chargers swept the setters in three sets, winning their 13th consecutive match. Caroline Martins led the way with 12 kills in the night, followed by Mallory Nowicki and Alex Boozy with 9 and 8 respectively. The Chargers are now 11-0 in the NE10 and have been ranked number 2 in the initial NCAA regional rankings. Men's Rugby concluded their undefeated season with 43-7 win on Sunday, October 29th. With the win, the team scored its first place in the conference and scored 300 points on the season. The club will now progress to the playoffs next week where they hope to continue their winning streak all the way to the Nationals. Football won in a dramatic fashion on Saturday, October 28th when they defeated American International 20-19. The defense stood tall and were able to stop a fourth down conversion with one minute to play in the fourth quarter. Quarterback Ajay Patterson threw for 247 yards and three total touchdowns on the day. Women's soccer ended their season with a 2-1 overtime loss against Bentley, with senior Kelly Quigley scoring the lone goal for the Chargers. Women's soccer concluded their 2017 season 6-8-4 as an overall record and 3-7-4 in the NE10. And that's all for sports, and back to you, Kaylee. One of the biggest questions for the media is how technology will impact the future coverage of news and entertainment. 
With us today is Bruce Barber, a 30-year radio veteran who hosted the popular show Smith & Barber in New Haven and is now the general manager of WNHU at the University of New Haven. Thank you for being here, Bruce. It's a pleasure. So our first question is, what do you think are the modern challenges of radio, and how are you and the students at WNHU adapting to them? So in radio now, um, really, this generation didn't grow up with just radio. This, gener this generation grew up with the internet. So um, I think what that does is it provides, it creates challenges for radio because not as many people are used to listening in that format. Um, but it opens up a lot of possibilities with respect to how you create audio for digital devices. So podcasting, um, I'd like to give a little plug here. I will be teaching Introduction to Podcasting Spring Term. Sign up soon. Um, so I'm, I got very interested in podcasting kind of as the evolution of radio. So I think there's still a place for that, that traditional kind of serendipitous listening that's out there over the airwaves, but there's a lot of great potential using uh, both digital ways to consume audio now with smartphones and PCs, laptops, um, but also to produce digital audio in the same way. So how does college radio relate to the constant changes that are happening in professional radio? So the great thing about college radio is that um, we're not constrained by the same kind of pressures that uh, professional radio stations face. In other words, we're trying to educate students and we're trying to um, operate the station as a lab for student learning so we can try things. At professional stations, they got to try to make money. So they don't really get that opportunity to experiment the way we do on a college campus. And our last question is, how is WNHU adapting to the on-demand culture of music in today's day? So that's something we're really wrestling with. And um, the, so one way we're doing it, one big change in, in radio is that radio station used to be with a college station when I grew up in college radio. You had to be live. You were, it was live or nothing, basically. Um, now, uh, since the 90s, we've got automation software. So what we have on WNHU is students actually pick the music that's in our automation software. So it's almost like they're creating a Pandora-like experience by doing that. But there still is this question of how do you compete with uh, Spotify and Apple Music when people can just create their own playlists. Um, but I like to think with our student shows, the way you do that is you've got students that have created their playlists on Apple Music or Spotify, uh, Spotify, but they get to tell the stories of why they selected those songs. And so I think that really adds to it. Well, thank you so much for being with us here. My pleasure. The Dean of Students Office hosted a consent panel on Thursday, November 2nd with the organization It's On Us to look at the policies and procedures in place to deal with sexual misconduct on campus. Students were able to come out to the German Club and gain a better perspective on the matter. Well, that's all for the Charger Bulletin News. Make sure to follow us on social media to keep up with all the stories from the University of New Haven. For the Charger Bulletin, I'm Kaylee Feschler.